Welcome to another Parcel Quest video quick tip. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to set MapEdge 2.0 as your default map viewer, along with how to use the main features in MapEdge 2.0. Please note, this video quick tip is meant to highlight some of the main features in MapEdge 2.0. If you'd like more detailed instructions after watching this video, please make use of the MapEdge 2.0 user guide, which you can access from the help section within the MapEdge 2.0 program. Unlike our first MapEdge program that was launched a number of years ago, MapEdge 2.0 is compatible with all internet web browsers. In this tutorial, I'll be using Google Chrome. First, in order to open an APN map in MapEdge 2.0, you'll need to set your map viewer preferences to MapEdge 2.0. To do this, click on the account menu and then select my preferences. Within the Map Viewer option, go ahead and click the drop-down and select MapEdge 2.0. And then close the Preferences box. Now that we have our preferences set, I'm going to run a search of all the Williamsons in Sacramento County. There are two ways to open the APN map associated with the parcel you're looking for. From the Google Map, you can left-click on one of the blue drop pins and then click on the APN Map button within the pop-up box. Or you can access the APN Map by clicking on the green map link within the detail page of your parcel of interest. Since we're in the detail page view, I'm going to click on the map link to access the APN map. This will take us to a new tab in your browser, and we are now in the new MapEdge 2.0 program. When the map first opens, the default selected tool is Pan. When the Pan tool is selected, you can move around on the map image by clicking and holding the left mouse button. Now let's take a look at some of the tools located within the top horizontal menu bar. To zoom in on a specific area of the map, first press the Zoom In button and then click on the desired area of the map to zoom in on that area. To zoom out, first press the Zoom Out button and then left click on the desired area of the map to zoom out. To bring the map back to its original display size, left click on the Zoom to Full Extent button. Now let's look at the new Measure and Highlight tool. This tool can be accessed by clicking on the orange icon within the horizontal menu bar. This tool combines the ability to measure both the perimeter and total area of a parcel or custom area as well as highlight your custom area with one of several colors. You can also draw and measure one or more line segments. To draw an area, click on the area icon within the measure and highlight menu. Before drawing an area, you'll need to make sure you set the scale to match the scale of the map. For the area calculation to be correct, the scale must be set correctly before you draw your custom area. In this example, you'll notice the map that we're working with has a scale of 1 inch equals 100 feet. And that can usually be found up here in the upper right hand corner. That's going to be the default selection within the measure and highlight menu box. Next, you can go ahead and select a color. If you want the drawn area to be highlighted in color, you'll need to select a color before you begin to draw your custom area. If you don't want the area to be highlighted in a specific color, you can simply choose None from the Highlight Color drop-down. For this example, let's go ahead and select Yellow. Before drawing a custom area, it's good sometimes to zoom in first on the area you'd like to draw in order to maximize accuracy. So we'll go ahead and we'll zoom in slightly on the map. When we zoom in, that closes the Measure and Highlight box. So we'll need to 
reopen it. Area is now selected. Now as you move your mouse from the measure and highlight menu onto the actual map, your cursor should convert to crosshairs. Simply click on the corners of the custom area you'd like to draw. After you finish your shape, the area will snap closed. The area will be highlighted, if you choose to do so, and the measurements will appear. To measure a line, go back to the Measure and Highlight menu and click on the Line icon. It will turn green when it's activated. Drag your mouse back on the APN map and click where you'd like to begin your line segment. To close the line measurement, drag your mouse back to the highlight menu and click on the line icon. The toggle measurements button allows you to turn all of the measurements associated with your drawn shapes off or back on again. The add text tool can be accessed by clicking on the blue icon within the horizontal menu bar. After clicking on the Add Text tool, your pointer will change to a pencil icon. When you click on the area of the map where you'd like to add your text, the Add Text box will open and appear. Within the Add Text box, you can choose Font, Size, and Color. Note that the font size is based on the map showing at full extent. So if you are zoomed in, the font will look larger even if you've chosen a small font size. After you've typed your text, chosen your font, the size of your text, and your color, click the green Add Text button to add your text to the map. Once you've placed your text, it cannot be moved. The Add Arrows tool can be accessed by clicking on the red icon within the horizontal menu bar. After clicking on the Add Arrows tool, the Arrow Stamp menu will open. Within the Arrow Stamp menu, you can choose from an up, down, left, or right arrow. as well as several different color options. After you've chosen your stamp option, go ahead and click on the area of the map where you'd like to add your arrow stamps. Please note you cannot move the arrow stamps once they've been placed. The Drawing History tool can be accessed by clicking on the green icon within the horizontal menu bar. After clicking on the Drawing History tool, the Drawing History menu box will open. Here you'll have the option of selecting any of the individual drawing items that you've created and you can remove them from the APN map. To remove a specific item, simply click on the individual item and click the delete button to remove that specific item from the map. The delete all button will remove all of the items that you've created from the map. One last item worth noting is that there are going to be occasions where APN maps contain multiple sheets. If you're looking for a specific parcel that doesn't appear on the current map, it may be located on a subsequent map sheet. If a map page has one or more map sheets, you will see the Next Sheet button activated. In this example, you'll see that it's not currently activated because there's only one sheet associated with this area. You can then use this button along with the Previous Sheet button to track down that sneaky parcel. Finally, 
Don't forget to make use of the MapEdge 2.0 user guide by clicking the online help button. I'd recommend going over this manual when you have a moment since there are going to be additional features that aren't covered in this video tutorial. Thanks for watching.